Welcome to our morning service on this Pentecost Sunday and welcome to St Mark's Church in Peaslake. I hope you've been able to download the service sheet which is on the link below. I'm standing in front of our Not a Prayer Tree outside, which is outside this church of St Mark's and also St James in Shear where you've been hanging your ribbons as you've prayed through this week of Thy Kingdom Come and we are allowing the Spirit to blow through our prayers as we offer them to God. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we are praying for the Spirit to come. We remember the Spirit coming on the first apostles. And so we think of it as the birthday of the Christian Church. So welcome to this morning service. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have rejoiced at enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known in the world. As we wait in silence, fill, fill us, us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we listen to your word, fill, fill us, us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill, fill us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill, fill us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we long for your renewing, Fill us, us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill, fill us with, with your, your spirit. spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill, fill us, us with your, your spirit. spirit. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So we say together, Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us where we have gone wrong and sinned, and help us to walk from now on in your way. Amen. And may the God of love and power bring you back to himself, forgive you and free you from your sins, and restore you to newness of life by his Spirit. Amen. We now have our first hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
now go over to Shear, where Judy has our reading, and Tim will preach. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer and the Sustainer. Amen. The classic definition of a sacrament is a visible sign of an invisible grace or an outward sign of an inner grace. <clears throat> And what that essentially means is that a sacrament is an occasion when God is at work in a mysterious and invisible way, but that it takes place through visible means, through objects, through actions that can be seen. The Church of England primarily recognises the importance of two sacraments, which are Holy Communion and Baptism. So when water is poured, when hands are laid, when bread is broken, when wine is drunk, God, primarily through the Holy Spirit, is at work. Grace is being given, but in a visible way, through material things. The Roman Catholic Church uh, officially recognises seven sacraments. That's not to say that we don't think that the other five uh, are occasions when the church is acting sacramentally, just that we, we primarily recognise the two. And the Orthodox Church um, takes that slightly further. Um, from the Orthodox perspective, Christ himself is the sacrament of God, a visible sign of the invisible God. And so the church is a sacrament of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are a visible sign of Christ who can now no longer be seen. We are a sacrament of Christ and therefore everything that the church properly does, it's done plenty of things improperly over the years, but the things which the church properly does by the Spirit are our sacraments, are sacramental. You could take it a stage even further than that. You could argue that because God is present in creation, because God is there in the world around us, at work, upholding, sustaining creation itself, that there is a sacramental nature to, to creation, to everything around us in a sense. What does, that, what does that mean? How does that work? Well, when we talk about God as Trinity, we usually use the words Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But those are just words that we use to try and get a little closer to the nature of God. They don't literally describe who God is. Uh, Mike will be saying a bit more about the nature of Trinity next week. So sometimes we do, and it's perfectly OK, to use other words the one who is beyond us, the one who is beside us, the one who is within us. Or the blessing I said at the beginning of this sermon, the creator, the redeemer and the sustainer. When we talk about God who creates, who redeems and sustains, we are primarily saying that God the Father creates, 
that Jesus redeems, that the Spirit sustains. But actually all three persons of the Trinity are at work in all the acts of God, but we recognise one primarily more than the other in some situations. And so it is the Spirit that we recognise that is primarily, primarily upholding and sustaining creation. It is the Spirit that it is at work in the world around us. But more than that, if you take it to its logical limit, there is a sense in which God not only creates that is responsible for the initial coming into being of the universe, but actually it is the presence of God in the spirit that keeps the universe going. And that without God, not only would there have been no creation, but without God now, the universe would fall back into the nothingness from whence it came. So the presence of God, the presence of the spirit, the sustaining nature of the spirit is necessary simply to keep us all in existence, to keep us all going, to keep us all doing the whole universe, doing the things that God ordained it to do. At Pentecost, uh, the key reading usually is the Acts reading, the reading that tells the actual story of the birthday of the church, as Sarah referred to it as earlier. The occasion when, and I'm sure you know the story, when after Jesus' ascension, the disciples went to Jerusalem, waited until eventually they were in that house when a mighty wind blew through. Tongues of fire seemed to appear over each one of them. They spoke in tongues and the church was born. But that's not to say that the Spirit wasn't around before then. Of course, the Spirit uh, has been around since before the beginning of time, as the other two persons of God have been. And we see the appearance of the Spirit in the Old Testament from time to time, but not in the sense uh, of bringing into being the church that we see at Pentecost. Indeed, uh, just 40 days earlier, uh, at the time of Christ's resurrection, 50 days earlier, sorry, at the time of Christ's resurrection, uh, in our gospel reading today, we heard how Jesus appeared to the disciples in the upper room and then breathed his spirit into them. So this is a more personal, this is, this is the gentle breath of God being blown into each disciple. The Holy Spirit can come like a mighty wind and fire. The Holy Spirit can do extraordinary and amazing things. But the Holy Spirit is also necessary for each of us to maintain our spiritual life day by day. The breath of God, just as, as regular and as necessary as breathing itself to sustain us in our daily lives. Now, the birthday uh, of the church is we're celebrating today. Uh, I guess if we knew exactly uh, the dates, uh, it would be the 1900 and something birthday of the church. When, when our children were little, uh, birthdays were exciting and exuberant and energy filled times. Um, I don't know about you, but as I get older, birthdays seem less important, less an occasion to get excited about. Uh, and many of us in the church are less excited and less exuberant about our faith, certainly than those early disciples at Pentecost, but probably even than in the early days of our own faith, when we were first filled with the Holy Spirit, when we first knew that power in our lives. And so uh, if this was a normal Sunday, a normal Pentecost, my sermon would probably be trying to encourage you who would be sat before me uh, to, to let yourself go, to allow the Spirit to blow through our church, to pray for our church, to be fired up and shaken up, to go out uh, into our community and to do potentially amazing things. And I hope our church will do that. And I hope that we will earnestly pray for that at some point. But this Pentecost, I don't know about you, but I don't feel it really feel like being shaken up and sent out. I can't physically be sent out very much anyway, even with the slight relaxations. And I certainly don't feel like being shook up and fired up. What I feel more like I need at the moment uh, is just having new life breathed into me, just having that sustaining, upholding power of the Spirit. We're entering now uh, our third month of lockdown uh, and it's starting to feel, for me anyway, and I'm sure for some of you, 
like hard work uh, and and I just need I need a bit more energy I need a bit more life uh, and I'm going to need the spirit to give me that when Sarah presides at our sacrament in a little while today I like you can't be there with Sarah in St Mark she's the only the only one the only priest who's allowed in uh, and so I won't be physically sharing in that sacrament but when she calls the Holy Spirit to come upon the bread and the wine uh, I'll be praying the prayer that's on our service sheet and I'll be praying that even though I won't physically be receiving the Eucharist that I will nevertheless receive that invisible sacramental grace that goes with it the breath of God Last week I spoke about holding on tight to the things that connect us with God, those things we can hold on to at this time. Our worship, our prayer, our taking part even online um, in the sacrament, but other things too, creation, music, films, because I've suggested earlier, these can be sacramental things too. And I encouraged us to hold on tight to them. What I meant by that is to make sure that we hang on to doing those things. But the way in which we do it needs perhaps not to be with too tight a grip. If we go back to the kite analogy, it's important to hold tight to the string to and not allow the kite to escape. So it's important to hold on tight to keep doing the things that connect us with God. But if we hold on too tight, it can stop them being the two way thing that they are meant to be, not just to connect us to God, but allow God to connect to us. A lightning is quite capable of hitting the earth without a lightning rod to help it. But sometimes things, objects can help, like Benjamin Franklin flying his kite in the rain, uh, the lightning uh, rejoiced in having the string to travel down. So when we hold on to carry on doing those things that connect us to, with God, we need to do so in a relaxed way that allows the spirit to breathe into us, not with closed mouths and clenched teeth, but with an openness and a relaxed nature that invites the spirit to come in. Think of those breathing exercises that Jane does at the beginning of Take Time where we breathe, we relax, we allow the spirit, we allow Jesus to come to us. So when I say that prayer during the Eucharist, when, Je when Sarah invites the spirit in, I shall try to not hold on too tightly to the words, to allow enough space between them for God's spirit to be breathed into me. I hope you'll be able to do that too. And not just today, in our Eucharist, but in the other things that you do in the days, the weeks and months ahead. Do so in an intentional way with a desire to allow the spirit to be blown into us, to be breathed into us while we do them through us doing them, whatever they may be, reading the Bible, daily prayer, communing with nature, allow request, pray for God to breathe his spirit into us, into you, so that we may be given the energy, the life, the breath of God to keep us going, to fill us with joy, to keep us doing the things that we need to do, that God wants us to do uh, in our life and in our days ahead. Amen. Thank you, Tim. On this Pentecost Sunday with Christians around the world, let us affirm together the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God 
and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now go over to Mike in Peace Lake, where he will be leading our prayers of intercession. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. And through this time of restriction and lockdown because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray that your love, which passes all understanding, will reach out through us to our families, neighbours and friends. We pray for all those so faithfully serving our nation that they may know of our gratitude and appreciation. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division in society in family relationships and in all situations of discord. We pray for your healing to be upon all those we know who at this time are unwell and we hold in our hearts before you now. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church, living and departed, in the joy of eternal life. Almighty God, we pray and give thanks for the lives of those who have recently died. We remember Anne Dixon, Roger Rennie, Tina Gould, and also Leslie Jones and Chris Hewitt, whose funerals were held in the last few days. We pray for all their families, that your love and compassion will surround and comfort them. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. 
Amen. And the collect for today, the day of Pentecost. The day in which we pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to teach you in British Sign Language the peace this morning, and that's BSL language. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God has made us, us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. This communion service is the first one we've had since Easter. And sadly, we cannot be together physically in the church. So I'm presiding alone and I will be receiving the bread and the wine alone. And I would encourage you that when I take the bread and wine, that you, as it were, receive it spiritually, that you take Jesus into your heart and into your mind. And there's a prayer on the order of service to help you with that. And we call that spiritual communion. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks. Great God, our creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join with the angels to celebrate and say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread and thanked you and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that, though, that we who share these gifts, physically and spiritually, may be fed by Christ's body and his blood.
pour your spirit on us, that we may love one another, work for the healing of the whole earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Come Holy Spirit, to all baptised in your name that we may turn to good whatever lies ahead. Give us passion, give us power, make us transform the world from what it is to what you have created it to be. Amen. The choir will now lead us in our next hymn.
Thank you for joining us this morning in St Mark's Peace Lake. And if you don't already receive the weekly spirituality mailing from the Parish of Shear, do contact him, our rector, at rector at parishofshear.com and he will put you on the mailing list. So this week we've been praying thy kingdom come with Christians from all over the world. And so thank you to everybody who's taken part, who's hung up their ribbons outside their homes, in trees, and also in our churchyards. These are visible signs of the prayers of the people as the Spirit of God blows through them. And many of us have really enjoyed Take Time meditations which have taken place daily this week. So thank you, Jane, for leading those. And the last Thy Kingdom Come event is tonight at six o'clock. And that is the diocesan service of celebration for Thy Kingdom Come. And again, the link is on the mailing. So do join everybody uh, with that. So contact me or Tim if you want to know more. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created, breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us, make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who set the Church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and those you love, today and always. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.